Okay, okay, let's step back a bit here. I've given you a lot of doom and gloom. I mean, I know we've got coronavirus and COVID-19 sweeping the world. And on top of that, you're reminded that this whole climate change problem is, is still here. Uh, even with everything we're going through, that's not changing. But there is hope. And let's look at the hope. This episode is on the solutions. So, this leads us to the most important question of our lifetimes. No. Who will win? Climate change or us? To answer this question, we need to ask two more questions. Can we power our lives with far less CO2? And if the answer to that is yes, will we choose to do it? Answering the first question? That's pretty straightforward. The second? Well, that depends on a few things. One of them is you. So, question one. Scientists say that to protect ourselves from the worst effects of climate change, we need to make sure our average global temperatures don't rise more than two degrees Celsius. And we've already gone up almost one degree. Yikes! That means we need to cut our fossil fuel habit Fast. Now, slow everything down here. You're thinking, what? One degree? Two degrees? We see a change of like 30 degrees from how cold it is in the morning to how warm it is in, in the afternoon here. We're not talking about temperature outside our, our, our door. That That's weather. What we look at outside our window, what we feel, how it changes from 38 degrees in the morning to 60 degrees in, in the afternoon, that's weather. Remember, climate is the average uh, weather patterns over a whole year or years. And when we're talking global warming, we're talking the whole planet. So when you calculate one degree hotter throughout the whole entire planet, that's a significantly big change, and we're almost at that one degree. And if scientists say two degrees, it's like, uh, we're talking major danger. This is what we want to slow down and reverse. So let's not get confused that the numbers are small, because you have to understand what the number means. How are we going to do that? Let's break it down. Most of the fossil fuels we burn are used to make electricity and move us around. So, wouldn't it be great if some giant brain geniuses could invent ways to power our buildings, devices, and cars without using fossil fuels? We already have! Check it out! Most electricity is made by turning a turbine connected to a generator. Power plants that use fossil fuels make this happen by burning coal or natural gas, which heats water, which makes steam, which spins the turbine. Steam sounds a little old-fashioned, right? It is. Because you can also turn a turbine with wind or water. Or you can skip the turbine altogether and, like a tree, pull energy directly from the sun with solar panels. These are called renewable energy sources because they never run out, unlike fossil fuels, which will eventually run out. And CO2? There's none of that. What about getting around? You still need gas, right? Less and less. Electric trains and buses are already moving people around in many cities, and many more are joining in. Electric cars used to look like golf carts, but now some of the fastest, best-performing cars in the world are electric. And if you produce electricity from renewable sources, then these cars can truly run CO2-free. So, we can make better energy, but we also can use amazing technology that demands much less of it. This LED light bulb uses one-sixth of the energy of this old-fashioned one. This insulation is so good at keeping indoor temperatures comfortable, people can use their heater or AC less. And millions of people who have realized it's more important to live well than live large are choosing to bike rather than drive, finding more exciting things to do than shop, and are taking pride in wasting less. All of this cuts down on our need for energy. So, one question, Chance. Yeah? Building all this wind and solar, all this insulation, new light bulbs, how is our country going to afford this? Switching over to renewable energy actually creates way more well-paying jobs than sticking with fossil fuels. It's a huge opportunity for new businesses to grow, invent, and thrive. And the change costs less than a lot of people think. Renewable 
renewables are getting cheaper fast. In fact, in more and more places, renewable energy now costs less than old-fashioned fossil fuels. Economists say that climate change is already costing our country hundreds of billions of dollars a year, and it's getting worse. Not making the switch is what's really expensive. It costs money to connect everyone on the telephone lines, to build America's highways, to build colleges and hospitals, and to create the internet. But these things make life better. And isn't that what money's for? Okay, we've got the answer to the first question. Can we do it? Yes. With technology we've already invented, we've got a great start. And it will only get better as we invent more. But what about the second question? Will we choose to? And that's up to us. Now, some of the facts that you got here are really important for you to write down uh, as you are taking notes. And I want to go back to... Plus, you can stop the video at any point. <clears throat> and this is from 2015. The fact that greenhouse gas emissions, 29% is used for electricity, and 27% is used for uh, transportation, that's a huge chunk if we were to get rid of those two. Industry uses, uh, gets, 21% of greenhouse gas emissions is to power industry. Those are the factories and places that make all our stuff. And then we've got commercial and residential, that's our houses and our farms, 9%. Uh, so there, there is hope there. And you've got renewable energies in the form of wind and solar uh, and hydro. So yeah. Good stuff here. And yeah, these numbers, you can see how these jobs to make uh, our reliance on fossil fuels less so we can use the renewable energy, they pay well. So these are good careers for people to look into. Environmental scientists, water quality testing is uh, how to keep your water and your air clean so that our environment survives, so that we survive. In the end, it's going to help us. So a lot of good notes you could take from this part here because let's focus on the solutions. What are we going to do?